Tēnā koutou katoa. Welcome to Media 7 and Māori Language Week, which happens to also be the week that the old campaigner Dun Mihaka was sent down for a month after calling a judge an asshole. He might have been better advised to say kai hamoti. We're not that bilingual yet. This is also the first week on sale in New Zealand of the year's most talked about media gadget, the Apple iPad. And it's the debut week of a new TV series from one of the creators of Outrageous Fortune. But first, the iPad. Jose Barbosa explains. <laughs> yes, it's very big China. Oh, hello, I didn't see you there with your camera and lights. I've just finished having dinner with a new friend. <laughs> friend or foe, distracting doohickey or useful brain tool. The iPad's here now and like chumps, you're all slobbering over it. Like mindless zombie. Oh my God, this game is so addictive, it's like crap! It's a multi-touch thingy, pretty much a window for looking at and touching stuff. Local print media's come to sup at Apple's feet. Using the online store, one can buy issues of North and South, or read your favourite Garth George column in the New Zealand Herald application. Thanks to the iPhone and the iPad, Apple is now the biggest thing created by man. Apple is now the world's biggest tech company based on a market value of more than 220 billion US dollars. And it makes money, lots and lots of money. And a company posted net income of over 3 billion US dollars in the quarter, up 90% from the 1.7 billion in the same period a year ago. And accordingly, anything Apple does gets covered by the news. TVNZ's Tim Wilson, Wilson was there when the iPad went on sale in the States. And the reason I came here for is I want the iPad really bad. The hysteria was so great it was like Apple had combined religion, soccer and chocolate into a handheld device. This is so exciting! But by the time the thing went on sale here, it was as if the romance had left the relationship, leaving only disillusionment and bitterness. The device has no keyboard, no USB input, no camera, and can't run more than one application at once. Meanwhile, TV3 gave the launch 30 seconds early in the day. The official New Zealand launch of Apple's iPad has happened with little fanfare. Although the two channels' coverage was so similar, one suspects they went halves on a camera crew to save cash. And perhaps that's just as well. After all, it's not the job of the 6 o'clock news to market Apple's products, which it can do quite well itself. So that's the iPad. And it's good night from me, and it's good night from him. Jose Barbosa there. I'm glad he's got some friends. With me now are two people putting local media on the iPad. The New Zealand Herald online editor, Jeremy Rees. Uh, North and South magazine editor, Virginia Larson. Hi. And go-to gadget guy, Ben Gracewood. Welcome yeah. to you all. Uh, Jeremy, why did you feel the need to create an application for the iPad? What's wrong with your website? Nothing wrong with the website. We think we've got a great website and a very good mobile site and newspaper. We just wanted to be where our readers are. And we figured that our readers are going to be um, all over sort of the iPad and other app uh, applications. We wanted to be there, and so far, I think we've been proved right. We've but already got 3,000 do downloads in six or seven days. And the people using it, can you tell that? Yes, we can. And they're, uh, they're, using, they're reading far higher numbers of stories per, um, per access point um, during the day. Uh, than a website and on the mobile. So it looks like the engagement is very, very high off the app, and that's going really well for us. We're having, you know, as I said, we're number one in the iTunes store, and we even got to, num in, I think, number 10 in the Australian iTunes store for app. Right, so that, that's the expert market. Absolutely. Right. Is this a potential gateway to charging for, cl for content? Well, we've got the, the, what we did was we've got a, a main sponsor, Mercedes Benz, and you get an ad at the beginning of, the, uh, of uh, downloading the app per day, one per day. Uh, and, they ha and they've allowed us, really, to be able to offer this uh, free for the first three or four months while we take a look at whether there is a charge and what we're going to do from sort of here on in. Do you realise how much people hate that video ad? I love it. It was actually made You're... specifically for the iPad app and it's actually designed specifically for the parameters of it. And, yep, there's been a bit of blowback, but I think it's quite You're beautiful You're a 48 looking. megabyte download and 40 megabytes of that is that video. Oh, it's loading in the background. The news is loading in the background while you're thoroughly enjoying watching a what the car. So I think it's, a, it's very good. <laughs> I'll take it. It also allows it. us to actually, you know, offer it for free, all that content for free while, uh, you know, while having a principal sponsor. Hmm. Um, Virginia, um, why is North and South, which doesn't even have a website, uh, all of a sudden uh, first out there on the iPad? Well, 
Actually, ACP magazines has always been quite selective about websites across the titles. And, you know, look, I perhaps could have fought for one a year or so ago, but I'm really glad we waited because the iPad, the tablet, is just a perfect device for magazines. It's just, it's re-engineered, but it just, it's a magazine reading experience, and I think it was worth waiting to make that jump. I think in some ways the website is almost, it's, too, it's busy, it's buzzy, it works for daily, newspapers, but I think the iPad for magazines is just superb. And um, the web hasn't really worked that well for magazines, has it? I don't, yeah, I don't think so. I think this is the answer for magazines because it is just the way you can recreate the whole look and feel of a magazine. It's, in, you know, different entirely, but it also just has the right, it's the right environment for it. Was there anything to look at, you know, anyone else's work to, um, to gauge, you know, to not, work out what you wanted to do? Not a lot. We, we did sort of look at some of the US, the Esquires and the GQ. So we, we had a little bit to kind of work around when we were designing ours. But we had, we had good advice and I think we've found a model that really works for our magazine. And your model is you're, you're charging for the magazine straight off the bat. How's that going? Well, I think you'll see the magazine industry has actually on the tablet has found that the pay model is, is perfectly acceptable, I think that the content, I mean, we are entirely sourced locally. We don't have any syndicated material. There is a cost to having top journalists to be able to send out photographers to all mm. corners of the country. And I do think that people will accept the idea that for quality content, there does need to be a, a price. And I mean, look, while we've got kids willing to spend, you know, $1.79 on a tune from iTunes, I think to, to have a sort of subscription model price is, is reasonable. Ben, um, you were an early adopter. You got yours from the US before there was Absolutely. any local content, before there was a local iTunes <laughs> store. Might it not have been better to wait? No, like a dedicated geek, you know, I got one to send one over, someone to send one over on, on launch day and um, and gorged myself on it, had it for candlelit dinners. I called it her rather than him, like, not like <laughs> Jose, and, and had it at the breakfast table and, and really sort of, like I say, gorged myself on, on the technology and, and loved it for a while. Until the shine wore off. Uh, yeah, and the shine <laughs> the shine's worn off a bit for you, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's now at school with my son, my six year old son, donated to the school because we, you know, we love the local school, and um, I think that's where I found that the usage was um, for me as a perhaps an atypical user with two laptops and two desktops at home. Um, it only got five minutes of use every now and then to check the TV schedule or to or to check email when I was on the couch. Otherwise, to do anything decent, I'd get up and walk to one of the main computers. Yeah, I, I've been quite fascinated yeah. by this because about half the Uber geeks I know who rushed out and got one um, <laughs> love it and are completely immersed in it. Yeah. And the other half are angry that they've spent the money. Yeah. It, it, it's, there's quite a di <laughs> divergence there. I, I, exactly. And I, I think, you know, we're, not, we're certainly not the, um, the you know, maybe the typical market. And um, I do see, perhaps, you know, my, my parents-in-law bought one and they've got a desktop at home that they hardly ever use. I think that's perhaps a model for them. And likewise, my son, who, who doesn't really care for a keyboard um, or a high power, a high sort of content creation device, uh, he would use it a lot more. He'd play a lot more games. He'd, he'd use the photo apps, that sort of stuff. And, and that's where I think the enduring market will be. I'm, I don't know if the the regular computer user will, will keep you know finding it as their go-to device. Yeah, Jeremy, yeah. do you have any idea about who who your audience is on this thing? Because you know it's probably not kids. No, you're right. Uh, it, it's, well, obviously, it's early adopters. The first, for the first two days, um, all our readers read everything about the iPad. Mm. Now they're starting to read all the business news and, uh, and all sort of the latest news. So we're actually seeing it starting to fall in line a little bit with the mobile um, usage and um, the website. So as, mm. as a Herald user, why would, I, why would I use that app where I have to every day wait through a 30 second long video that the app doesn't take that long to load? It comes straight up when the video is not playing. Uh, when I can go straight to the website and have no interstitial ad that stops me, why would, why would I use the app? We wanted to design something that was not the, not the website, not the newspaper, and fitted absolutely the, the design of an iPad. So, I mean, it, it, the high resolution screen is fantastic for photos mm. and video, and we really wanted something that shows off the quality of those photos. And we, you know, we've got um, news photographers, you know, uh, none, uh, you know, best in New Zealand, and you can really show that off. We're moving a lot more into high resolution video, and you've got and a, ver a very pictorially oriented um, homepage for it as well. Yeah, Every absolutely. story is identified by a picture, and that, yeah. that's uh, something oh, the, else about the, about the North and South. Are, yeah. The images are superb. I mean, you have a brilliant photo essay. You're restricted in your print mm. edition because you might have eight pages. 
the iPad allows you to add all those extra images. And, and for us, you know, there's a very big expat audience. I mean, what, how many New Zealanders? Over 400,000. Mm. Um, sending a print magazine is an expensive exercise. Now, here you have something where in London or wherever, you know, they can immediately have access to a homegrown publication and just all that opportunity for extra images and video. It's and you can tell people when there's a new issue because um, as we've been sitting here, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Australian Gourmet Traveller has told me that the August issue of Gourmet Traveller is now available. Download now. <laughs> ben, do you think this is just the first of these kinds of devices? I mean, Apple is typically out in front of the market. Are, are we going to see more? Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, there's already, there's already many, um, you know, been announced Android tablets. You know, um, Windows will, will shout from the rooftops that they've had tablets for years. You know, this sort of thing. They haven't done it well, but they've had them. Um, so yeah, there'll be more of them, um, and that I guess raises the question of uh, on the, you know, the the development model where people are developing these apps that are specific to the um, to the iPad, and they won't run on any other device without a lot of work. Mm. Um, that's always the debate about Apple's model, I guess. Is, I've actually yeah. been surprised at how poor most of the editorial apps are. I've found, mm. I've found it lovely for web browsing, yep. but um, things like the Vanity Fair app annoy me. Yep. I, I have to say, your one measures up very well against a lot of the international yeah. ones. Yeah. So, yeah, magazines in general, I think, is, is, is a decent approach. So Wired and North and South, good approaches. I do really, really wonder about New York Times, BBC, New Zealand Herald. Why would I not just use the website? I mean... <laughs> Speaking of yeah. which, if I am using your website, Jeremy, I can't see any of your videos because they're in Flash. They need to be in HTML5 video. Mm -hmm. uh, is that coming? Oh, we're, we're having to look at everything for, for the future for our videos so that it can play across every device because we want it to be seen everywhere where our users are. So, yeah. So the, the work you've done on this, can you repurpose that work to any of these future devices? We'd hope so. Um, but, you know, there are, there are going to be limits. But we, we want to be able to sort of spread whatever we can do across as much as we can. You know? we'll fo basically, follow users. Where, where are we going with this? Where are we heading? Because it's been touted already, Rupert Murdoch has said as much, that this is potentially the saviour of print because newspapers can't make money via their websites, but maybe they can through apps on these things. Is that going to happen? I actually, th uh, I think he's wrong on two, uh, two fronts. First of all, I don't think a lot of newspapers, certainly not the Herald, it doesn't need a saviour. The readership is uh, about, figures are about to come out, they're going to show that they're second highest in 10 years. Um, so uh, the Herald, despite all, is, is doing very well, despite actually having sort of strong digital um, platforms. But secondly, I think there's only going to be one part of it. You know, and I think we're going to get used to actually sort of a lot more, you know, the Herald being on mobile, the Herald being on, on apps, and, and they're trying to get the Herald everywhere. So well, that it's a part of the pro On of that the thrilling note of the Herald <laughs> everywhere. Oh, we want that. <laughs> um, I'm going to conclude here. Uh, that is all. Thanks very much to Jeremy Rees, Virginia Larson, and Ben Gracewood. After the break, Rachel Lang talks about This Is Not My Life, and Sarah Daniel looks at a hitch for hitch. <laughs>